Listening to the Critical Hour on Radio Sputnik, I'm Wilmer Leon, joined here by my co-host Garland Nixon. Thank you, Wilmer. Press TV has a piece entitled France's Crimes in Africa, Historical Facts or Misleading Info. France's president, Emmanuel Macron, has called on African youth, not least the Algerians, to refer from considering France as an enemy of their countries. For insight into this, we turn to our next guest. He holds the John Jay and Rebecca Moore's Chair of History and African American Studies at the University of Houston. He's one of the most prolific writers of our time. His latest book is entitled The Counter-Revolution of 1836, Texas Slavery, Jim Crow, and the Roots of American Fascism. Dr. Gerald Horn, as always, Welcome back. Thank you for inviting me. So Macron was responding to a question from journalists about the anti-French sentiment in a number of African countries. The president, he's on a three-day visit to uh, Algeria, which began on Friday, and Algeria has marked its 60th anniversary of independence. So, Dr. Horn, help us understand, what is it that uh, Macron is trying to get Algerians to forget? a history of mass torture, bestiality, brutalization to begin with, uh, beginning officially in 1830 with the French colonizing of that largest African nation, speaking of Algeria, and then continuing for decades forward, recall that the brutalization of Algeria attracted the attention of the Caribbean analyst and psychiatrist and writer, Franz Fanon, who then came to North Africa and became a steady ally of the Algerian freedom fighters and his works, including The Wretched of the Earth, uh, then went on to inspire a generation of Black American militants, including the Black Panther Party. So I think that Mr. Macron is aware, at least I hope he's aware, uh, of what I just recounted. And you should also step back for a second and try to understand why Mr. Macron chose this moment to arrive in North Africa. Just a day or two before his departing France, he gave a remarkable speech where he said that the so-called era of abundance, his words, not mine, mm -hmm. was screeching to a halt in France. Now, of course, that era of, of abundance will not necessarily uh, end for his uh, millionaire and billionaire backers. He's basically promising and pledging austerity for the French working class. And this has a lot to do with how France and other Western European nations fundamentally sanctioned themselves when they thought that they were sanctioning Russia in light of the special military operation in Ukraine of February 2022. Uh, that is to say, I'm sure you're familiar with the headlines that suggest that energy prices in London will be skyrocketing by 80% as winter peaks around the corner. Our friends may not be hit with that kind of cyclonic velocity because it's more dependent upon nuclear energy to deliver uh, electricity and other sources of energy, but certainly it will be impacted. And so that helped to guide Mr. Macron across the Mediterranean because Algeria is a major producer of natural gas. But the bad news for Mr. Macron is that the Algerians are well aware of the fact that they're sitting in the catbird seat. The Algerians have worked out a rather a positive relations with Moscow, and they are unwilling to be manipulated uh, by their former colonial master. And this makes Mr. Macron's visit all the more difficult and problematic. And I should also say that if certain commentators are accurate, we may be at an inflection point in terms of the tortured and torturous history of some of these Western European capitalist countries uh, symbolized by France, who benefited so handsomely from not only the plunder of Africa, but the like plunder of the Americas. But now, with their self-sanctioning, uh, there are those who are suggesting that with regard 
to the capitalist world, the Western European countries, which has been seen as one of the richest pockets on planet Earth, uh, may be descending in status. And unless they can work out some sort of arrangement with African nations like Algeria to make up for the shortfall in terms of their declining relations with Russia, I think that those prognosticators may have a point, and I think it may be time to kick Mr. Macron and his class while they're down. You know, Dr. Horn, something that we've discussed here, and that is that how the history of colonialism affects the dynamics of this whole um, change, this sea change now, in that initially the U.S. empire thought that all of the African and South American countries, et cetera, the global South, out of fear, would go along with them. And the history of brutal, brutal colonialism colored their view to say, nah, we ain't with you on this one. We're overall going to go with Russia on, on this one because you guys are a bunch of brutal colonialists. Now they're trying to make up for the doing the same thing, trying to say, OK, we lost the resources from Russia. We'll go to Africa or South America, wherever, that has plenty of resources. And again, it's this history of brutal colonialism is coming back in a time of need to haunt the U.S. empire and the, and the um, you know, former empires, uh, colonial empires in um, Europe. Dr. Horn, your thoughts? Well, and this is particularly the case for Algeria, which came to independence in 1962 after a rather brutal conflict. Uh, in fact, uh, the conflict was so brutal that when then French leader Charles de Gaulle was trying to negotiate a settlement with the North African fighters, there was such opposition in France that he barely escaped being assassinated. Uh, you may reference the blockbuster film Day of the Jackal in order to get a glimpse mm -hmm. of what I'm referring to. Indeed, with regard to the point that you just made, even the New York Times today, uh, August 29th, 2022, uh, mentioned at the conclusion of an article about Mr. Macron's visit that the Algerians are quite hostile to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, uh, led by the United States of America, which now has plunged uh, Europe into crisis by death of this conflict in Ukraine. Uh, why should not the Africans be hostile to NATO? Uh, the other headline that we should be paying attention to is the turmoil in Libya. Recall that it was NATO that toppled the more and more Qaddafi regime more than a decade ago, uh, plunging that North African nation, indeed a neighbor of Algeria, uh, into turmoil, which is now erupting in bloodshed in the streets. We know that NATO... Uh, tried to prevent the coming to independence of the former Portuguese colony that is Angola, which just had elections in the last few days, tried to prevent the coming to independence of its neighbor across the continent in Mozambique. We know that in 1947, in an episode that is yet to receive the kind of publicity it so richly merits, the French colonialists massacred tens of thousands of Africans in Madagascar the island off the southeast coast of Mozambique, with the complicity, I might add, of U.S. imperialism. And so it seems that the North Atlantic nation must think that we Africans are, have some advanced case of amnesia or dementia, that we do not have historical memory. Either that, that they must think that we're chumps. <laughs> uh, either that, and I'm afraid to say, they must think that the uh, Africans act like some African Americans do, who oftentimes overlook the ravages and savagery of slavery and Jim Crow in order to maintain peace with the regime in Washington. Well, I'm afraid to inform Mr. Macron and his comrades that the African nations like Algeria have sovereignty, and they have little interest in making peace with a declining cohort of imperialist bloodsuckers headquartered in Paris. And to that point, Macron says, let's be clear, many activists of political Islam have an enemy, France. Many networks that are clandestinely stirred up by Turkey, Russia, and China have an enemy, 
France, denouncing the neo-colonial and imperialist plans of influence of those countries. The French president expressed hope that France and Algeria would be able to look back at the past with humility in order to establish trust and cooperation in the future. Let's move forward. I know that building trust takes time, but I do my work with patience, commitment, and love for the African continent and Algeria. <laughs> what are we to make of that, Dr. Horn? Well, as I said, uh, he must think that the Algerians are chumps. Uh, instead of humility, he should have said, look back in, in the past with amnesia. <laughs> uh, that is to say, forgetting uh, all of the blood that was shed over the decades by Algerian patriots because of the bloodthirstiness of these uh, French colonialists and plunderers. And you mentioned Turkey in terms, or yes. Turkey, I should say, in terms of that litany. And in terms of analyzing the present global correlation of forces, we would be remiss if we failed to pay attention to Turkey, which, as you know, for 500 years, ending in about 1918, were a major force by dint of the Ottoman Empire, ruling a good deal of Africa. And during that time and since that time, Turkey and France have crossed swords more than once. They're crossing swords once again because much of the erstwhile French neocolonial empire in Africa happens to be in countries that oftentimes had close relations to Turkey based upon the commonality of Islam. Uh, Algeria, uh, Morocco, uh, Tunisia, uh, Senegal, the list is long. And I think that Turkey has a bone to pick uh, with the European Union. It's been a candidate member since 1999. Uh, shunted aside, and I would say that religious bigotry, that is to say the fact that it's a predominantly Muslim nation, has something to do with that, particularly when you see how Ukraine is being put on the fast track to European Union membership. And so Tur Turkey is drawing the appropriate conclusions, uh, brokering uh, more positive relations with Moscow, uh, increasingly turning its back on the North Atlantic countries to the point where the U.S. Treasury Department issued a stark warning to businesses in Turkey to stop dealing so warmly with Moscow on the economic level. This was a blatant violation of Ankara's sovereignty. Uh, once again, the North Atlantic countries must think that they're dealing with chunk as opposed to dealing with countries like Turkey with sovereign and independent national interests. And um, I would argue that very shortly, because Turkey does facilitate the movement of a lot of energy come this winter, um, they better not push themselves too far from Turkey because they're going to need them and probably need them to negotiate with Moscow. We've got uh, one minute. Well, th that is a fair point. And, and keep in mind as well that uh, Turkey has an antagonist with regard to Greece. We know that Greece, which is a member of the European Union, uh, has been favored by France to the consternation of Ankara. Turkey has just resumed diplomatic relations with Israel after years of frostiness. Uh, we know that France, along with the United States, have been stalwart allies of the Zionist entity. And so I think that the world is becoming ever more complicated for these North Atlantic nations. And if they're not careful, they're going to accelerate the decline, the spiral of decline that they now find themselves in. Dr. Gerald Horn, as always, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate that analysis, and we look forward to having you back. Thank you.